What is truth? Many have asked this question, but perhaps the most famous was the Roman governor named Pilate, roughly 2,000 years ago. Jesus was brought before Pilate on false charges that he was an evildoer and should be put to death. So Pilate examined him, asking him if he claimed to be the king of the Jews. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. But are you a king, Pilate pressed? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Then Pilate said, What is truth? What is truth indeed? For this reason Christ came. For what reason? To witness or testify to the truth. That must mean that the truth matters a great deal. And we should recognize that, particularly in our world filled with so much misinformation and disinformation. He came to testify to what truth? The truth about God. The truth that God is love, in direct contrast to Satan's disinformation campaign. Do you know the first words in the Bible? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That sentence begins the story of creation. But if God created the world good, why is there evil in it? Why didn't God simply create the world with no evil in the first place? Well, he did. Near the end of the story of creation, according to Genesis 1 verse 31, it says, God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. Evil came into this world, into God's good creation from outside, from an enemy. The story of Genesis goes on to tell us how the first humans, Adam and Eve, lived in perfect harmony, which sheds significant light on the nature of the conflict between good and evil, between Christ and Satan, in which our world is presently embroiled. But then, everything changed. As the story goes, Eve encountered a serpent in a tree. Not just any tree, but the one tree in the entire Garden of Eden that God had commanded Adam and Eve not to eat from. And this crafty serpent drew her into a conversation that became tragic. From the tree, the serpent spoke to Eve. A talking serpent? That seems strange indeed. And this is one of only two instances of animals that appear to talk in the entire Bible. The other is the story of Balaam and the donkey, a story for another time. In both cases, the one speaking turns out not to be an ordinary animal, but a supernatural being speaking through the animal. Back to our story here. And this serpent said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Notice, the serpent starts with what might seem like an innocent question. But in fact, the question states nearly the exact opposite of what God had commanded. God had told Adam and Eve that they could eat from every tree except for only one. It wasn't really a hard commandment, by the way. It was not as if God said they could only eat from one tree. No, no, only one tree was off limits. They could eat from any other tree in the garden. So Eve responded, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. You will not surely die, the serpent replied. Now here, the serpent is effectively claiming that God is a liar. You see, at this point, someone must have lied to Eve, either the serpent or God, and she has a choice to make. Either God had lied or the serpent was now lying to her, but someone was a liar. And the serpent claimed that God was the liar. So Eve had to choose. Who would she believe? But that's not all. The serpent doesn't merely allege that God is a liar. He then tries to plant a motive for God lying. He says, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So the serpent effectively claimed, God is lying to you because he wants to oppress you. He doesn't want what is best for you. He wants to keep you in the dark. These are three slanderous claims at least. 
God's commandments are not fair. God is a liar, and God did not really want the best for Eve. The portrait of God that the serpent paints is the exact opposite of God's character. The serpent's allegations are deeply slanderous. The book of Revelation identifies this serpent as the devil, calling him that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Jesus teaches further about this arch deceiver. He refers to him as a murderer from the beginning, saying he does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. In fact, the word devil itself, diabolos in Greek, means slanderer, one who brings charges with hostile intent. The serpent's strategy? Slander. Tell lies about God, so we will not trust him. This cosmic conflict, then, is primarily a conflict over who we will believe. Who will we trust? The truth matters far more than most think. We should recognize that, particularly in our world filled with so much misinformation and disinformation. In direct contrast to Satan's disinformation campaign, Jesus proclaimed of his own mission, For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. For this reason he came, to witness or testify to the truth. And he called his disciples to be witnesses to the truth. This is a major theme of scripture, one of many themes I discuss further in my book, God With Us. So how can you find truth? Jesus also declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you do not know which way to go, look to Jesus. If you want to know the truth, look to Jesus. If you want life, and life more abundant, look to Jesus. In Eden, after the fall, even in the midst of the near despair brought by sin, God responded with amazing grace. He promised Eve that a deliverer would come, that one day a descendant of hers would come to crush the head of the serpent. Who was that prophesied descendant? Jesus. Christ endured the ultimate suffering, and in so doing, he redeems all who love him while defeating Satan and making certain the final eradication of evil, suffering, and death. When Christ returns, this conflict will be put to an end. In the meantime, in a world filled with misinformation, you can place your hope in Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life.